Hi there, Mr. Holcomb here with another episode of The Math Behind the Modules. This is Lesson 8, Estimating Quantities. So we start off with a classwork exercise one. The Federal Reserve states that the average household in January of 2013 had $7,122 in credit card debt. Yikes. About how many times greater is the U.S. national debt, which is this big number? How many times greater? That's multiplication. So it says rewrite each number to the nearest power of 10 that exceeds it and then compare. So household debt equals $7,122. We're going to round, so we're going to round up to the nearest thousand, which is 9,999. All I'm doing is rounding up the seven to nine, the one to nine, the two to nine, and the three, and the other two to the nine. So you say that this number is less than this, which is true, and then I'm just simply going to add one to that and get 10,000. 10,000 equals 10 to the one two, three, four, 10 to the fourth power. Count the number of zeros, 10 to the fourth power is 10,000, four decimal places. So you're moving it from here to 1.0 times 10 to the fourth, which is just simply 10 to the fourth. Okay, so then we're going to do the same for the U.S. debt. All right, bear with me. This is going to take a while to write because it's so big. 16 trillion, 755 billion, 133 million, 9,522. So we're going to do the same thing here. We're going to round these up to 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9. And six more nines. So this is less than that, obviously. And then we're going to add one and go to 100 trillion. Okay, I'm just making sure I have the same number of digits. Okay, and then adding one gives me one more digit. This is going to equal. 10 to the 3, 6, 9, 12, 13, 14. There's 14 places of, with zeros in them. So that'd be the same as saying 1 times 10 to the 14th power, which is 10 to the 14th. So now it says about how many times greater is the U.S. debt than the household debt? So whenever we're saying how many times greater, we have to divide to find out what we're multiplying by. So the U.S. debt is 10 to the 14th. Household debt is 10 to the 4th. Now we're going to use the rules we learned earlier in pr prior lessons. And the rule for dividing is take the power of the numerator and subtract the power of the denominator if the bases are the same. And that's going to be 14 minus 4, which is 10 to the 10th. So the U.S. national debt is 10 to the 10 times greater than the average household's credit card debt. Okay, exercise two. There are about 3 million students attending school, kindergarten through grade 12 in New York. That must be state, they didn't say, but I'm sure it's not the city. Express the number of students as a single digit integer times the power of 10. So we're taking three, a single digit integer times the power of 10. So we're taking some number times 10 to some power. Well, 3,000 is three times 1,000. So first I'm gonna write that. That is three times, or three million is three times one million. So it's going to be three times, and one million has six zeros. That's going to come out to be 3 times 10 to the 6. So the first thing you do is multiply 3 and write this as 1 million and then count the zeros to determine how many place values we have. 
The next question says the average number of students attending middle school in New York is eight times 10 to the two. How many times greater, there's the key word, how many times greater, so I'm going to divide, is the overall number of K-12 students compared to the average number of middle school students. So this is our numerator and this is our denominator. So overall students was 3 million, which is three times 10 to the six. So I'm gonna write three times 10 to the six power and I'm going to divide by the average attending middle school, which is eight times 10 squared. How many times greater is the overall number of students compared to the number of middle school students? So this is our equation. To solve this, we're going to take the numbers that are by themselves in front of the 10 to the powers and just separate these. And it's gonna be 3.8 times 10 to the six divided by 10 squared. Three eighths is a decimal that comes out to be 0.375. And actually I wanna write a, an, a ones digit and since we don't have anything there, it will be zero. So it's 0 0.375 times 10. And our rule says to subtract when we're dividing. So we subtract exponents when dividing. So my answer is going to be 0 0.375 times 10 to the six minus two, which is four. And that means to move the decimal four places to the right, which is one, two, three, and then one more. So it's gonna be three, seven, five, and then an additional one, and then it's gonna be 3,750. So it's 3,750 times greater. Okay, next question. Exercise three. A conservative estimate of the number of star stars in the universe is six times 10 to the 22. The average human can see about 3000 stars at night with his naked eye. About how many times more stars are there? How many more time, how many times more stars are there in the universe? So we are going to divide compared to the stars as the human eye can see. So we're taking the bigger number, universe star approximation, and we're going to divide by three times 10 to the power of how many zeros it has. That is going to split up to six over three times 10 to the 22 divided by 10 to the third. Six divided by three is two times 10 to the 22 minus three. So it equals two times 10 to the 22 minus three, which is 19. So the answer is two times 10 to the 19. Okay, so for some reason, my program would not recognize a subscript, so I had to write it this way. So my answer explained in a complete sentence is there are about two times 10 to the 19 power times more stars in the universe compared to the number we can actually see. Okay, exercise four. The estimated world population in 2011 was seven times 10 to the nine. Of the total population, 682 million. 682 million looks like this and that equals 6.82 and there's three six seven eight decimal places so 682 million is 6.82 times 10 to the 8. of those people were left-handed approximately what percentage so there's the key here what percentage of the world population is left-handed so you take the total and we divide by the 6.82 times 10 to the 8. Okay, so when we're dividing, we don't have to have powers that are equivalent. What we do have to have is decimals lining up or seven divided by 6.82 is going to be approximately what? So I'll get the calculator. 
Okay, so here's my calculator. And this is more than one, so that'd be more than 100%. So I wanted to show you this. If we set this up incorrectly, we're going to get a value more than one, and that means more than 100% of the people, and that's not possible. So that is one way of determining which way we write something. So instead of doing this right here, let's instead do the other way around, and I'll explain how to set that up in a second. So 6.82 times 10 to the 8 divided by 7 times 10 to the 9. Um, it says, of the total population, which is this, 682 million of those people were left-handed. So 682 out of this, so this to that would be the order of saying the ratio. So it's this to this, part is to whole, so the part goes over the whole. Okay, so now when I take 6.82 and divide it by 7, 6.82 divided by 7, I get 0.974 which is really close, which equals 0.974 times 10 to the 8 minus 9, 8 minus 9. And so that is equivalent to 0.974 times 10 to the negative 1, which is equivalent to 0.0974. And that's approximately 0.1 or 1 tenth or 10%. And then I would say, approximately 10% of the world population is left-handed. To answer it in a complete sentence, I will just continue. And exercise five says, the average person takes about 30,000 breaths per day. Express this number as a single digit integer times a power of 10. So I want to take three times 10,000 is 30,000. There's my single digit integer times 10 to which power? Well, there's four zero, so it's 10 to the fourth. So it is three times 10 to the fourth. If the average American lives about 80 years or about 30,000 days, so they've already done the calculation for us. So if we live 30,000 days, how many total breaths will a person take in a lifetime? Well, 30,000 and 30,000 are equivalent. So really what we are doing, there's a couple ways I can do this. We know that 30,000 is equivalent to 3 times 10 to the 4th, and that's how many breaths per day. So then I can multiply that by how many days we live, which is the same 30,000. So when I do it this way, I multiply these, so that'd be really 3 times 3, and then times 10 to the 4 plus 4, because we're adding exponents. So we're going to get 9 times 10 to the 8. Okay. Another way we could have done that is, well, 3 times 10 to the 4th is how many breaths we take per day. 30,000 days is how many days we live in our lifetime if we live to be 80 years, and they're the same. So whenever we multiply two things that are equivalent, we square them. Th something times itself is something squared. Now we have a new the, the rule where we distribute, and that would be 3 squared times 10 to the 4 times 2 if we do our power rule here. And this will also come out to be 9 times 10 to the 8th. So either way you do it, that's how many breaths we will take in a lifetime if we live to be 80 years old. Okay, that is the end of Lesson 8. Go do your problem set.